Hi, this is Mike Mazzalongo with BibleTalk.tv. We're beginning a new series entitled 10 Steps to the New Spiritual You, a small group study for mature Christians. This series has 10 sessions, and this is session number one, entitled The Foundation. Now, before we begin, I want to credit a book by Chuck Swindoll entitled So You Want to Be Like Christ, which is uh, a book that served uh, as guide in developing this small group study for mature Christians. Now, a typical icebreaker question used to get people in a small group setting to open up and speak is, if you could be like anyone in history, who would that be and why? This question is pretty non-threatening and it's easy to answer, perhaps a family member or a favorite teacher or coach, maybe a successful artist or historical figure, the list goes on and on. However, if the question was, what do you need to be like in order to be like Jesus? Now this question might not be as easy to answer or discuss. You see, we can learn a lot from great achievers and people we love, But as Christians, the one person we should strive to actually be like is Jesus Christ. And so, in the following devotional lessons and accompanying discussion questions, we're going to be examining 10 steps that will help each believer come much closer to this spiritual ideal. And so, the first step to the new spiritual you is discipline. A transformation of any kind begins with a first step, and the beginning of the new spiritual you, the you that is more like Christ, is discipline. Now, some may have thought that the first step should be faith or repentance, perhaps baptism or good works. But remember that this course is for mature Christians who have already mastered these basic things and are, as the Hebrew writer says, Therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and press on to maturity, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. And so the road to spiritual maturity begins at the point of discipline. I quote the great NFL coach of the past, Tom Landry, who defined his job as football coach in the following way. My job is to get men to do what they don't want to do in order to achieve what they have always wanted to achieve. Well, uh, preachers might define their work in similar fashion. My job is to make people do things they don't want to do in order to receive the things they need. So in this sense, we can say that discipline is a virtue or a skill that enables a person to perform determined, deliberate, definable actions towards a clear goal in mind. Preachers, therefore, are like coaches in that they help the church discipline themselves for the goal of Christ-likeness, a goal that requires change in the individual. And this change at every step requires discipline to be accomplished. So let's talk about the role of discipline in spiritual maturation. An important passage relative to the pursuit of spiritual maturity, or as it is referred to in the Bible as godliness, is 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. Paul writes, But have nothing to do with worldly fables fit only for old women. On the other hand, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. Now, Timothy lived in Ephesus, a rich, sexually impure, worldly, cosmopolitan city. It was a place with many distractions and temptations for a young Christian man without much experience in life or in ministry. So what does Paul do? He encourages him to cultivate the first step on the road to spiritual maturity or piety or godliness, which is personal discipline. Now, Paul uses the Greek word gymnazo, from which we get the English word gymnasium. Other words that come from this root word are train yourself or condition yourself. This activity, you know, discipline, exercise, has two features. The first is repetitive training, making the right choices over and over again, uh, resisting temptation repeatedly, 
constantly putting the things of God as a priority over the things of the world. Doing these things over and over until they become second nature, a part of who you are and how you are known by others. The second feature of this activity, exercise or discipline, is that it cultivates a sense of personal responsibility where you take ownership of the process of your own spirituality. This is no longer the goal of your parents or your minister, but you have taken on the full responsibility for growing in Christ. So what's the goal here? Well, the goal is spiritual maturity, or in other words, the ability to experience the full presence of God in our lives. This experience becomes a preview of what heaven will be like and enables the believer to have no doubt, no fear about their salvation, and no anxiety about the world we presently live in, no matter how dark and dangerous it might become at times. It is the spiritual condition that allowed Paul to say, with all assurance, to this same Timothy as he contemplated his fast approaching execution by beheading in a Roman arena. Paul said, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the course, I have kept the faith. In the future, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 to 8. Now, to arrive at this level of spiritual maturity, one has to master several spiritual exercises that each enable the believer to grow in godliness, piety, and Christlikeness. Now, I mentioned the first of these, which is personal discipline which is essentially training yourself to do and think those things your flesh resists in order to gain the things that you need to obtain what you desire, which is spiritual maturity. In this small group series, we will discuss nine further steps that you'll need to take in order to reach your goal of spiritual maturity. Now, the next part of this session is five discussion questions that you'll need to answer and discuss among your group, which should consist of about five people for each group to guarantee good participation and input by all. I have a suggestion here. Because of the nature of this course material, it is recommended that the group meet on a monthly schedule to provide the time necessary to not only complete the discussion questions, but also put some of these ideas to uh, use and practice in your everyday life. Here are the five questions. Question number one, what thought, feeling, or event led you to this study? Question number two, describe your best spiritual attribute. Describe your worst fleshly weakness to the degree that you're comfortable sharing. Question number three, aside from Jesus, which Bible character inspires you and why? Question number four, which of the following Bible characters can you relate to best and why? Martha, Jacob, the elder brother in the parable of the prodigal son, King Saul, the apostle Peter, Noah, Sarah, Ruth, King David, Barnabas, Abraham. Question number five. What is usually the cause of your lack of personal discipline? And what do you say or do when you fail?